But what's good, y'all? Hey, man, I appreciate it, bro. Man, we all... Um, we had a good time, man. We had a good time celebrating. We had a good time celebrating, bro. 17 years of marriage, man. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. But yeah, we tired now. <laughs> We've been celebrating for a good minute. No, I, he said you're a morning person now. No, this is this is a rare this one this is a, this is a rare occasion. Um I've been off for the past few days now, so I decided, you know, let me let me do something in the morning time since I'm up. But um yeah, this is a rare occasion. All this with my friend. I'm doing good, y'all. I'm doing good. But um yeah, those who are here, I came to talk about the kingdom of God. So let's let's talk about our king. Why do you call religion a government? Because it's not a religion. Um, Jesus did not bring a religion. He did not bring a religion. He literally brought us a kingdom. And the kingdom is a government. Uh, we live in a government. We come from kingdoms. We come from governments. And that's why he told us to seek his kingdom. That's why he told us to seek his rulership. That's why he called himself a king. He didn't call himself a religious figure. He didn't call himself a president. He called himself a king. And that's what kingdom means. Kingdom means a, a, a kingdom that's ruled by a king, governed by a king. And he told us to seek that. He also called us his citizens. He called us ambassadors. All these are governmental terms. When he say pray, pray means petition. Petition is a governmental term. When Jesus said he, um, the father said he's a judge. That's not a religious term. That's a governmental term. That's an official word. He say come into his courts. That's not a religious term. That's a governmental term. But yeah, I think different. But yeah, we can. Yeah, we could. We could agree to disagree. I feel you. But um, I really not. I'm not going off my facts. I mean, I'm not going off my my thoughts. I'm going off facts. If you read um Isaiah nine six, Jesus said he brings a government on our shoulders, on his shoulders rather. Read Isaiah nine six. He said the Lord has come to bring a government on his shoulders. He didn't say he brought a religion. He said, I brought a government on my shoulders. And he said, I'm going to reign on the I'm going to reign on the throne of King David. <laughs> so, yeah, I ain't speaking my opinion. I ain't speaking my opinion. I'm only speaking what the words say. So that's how I know. And then. Yeah, we can go. We could we could we could talk for a while about that one. We are assembled as congregations of believers, not a church. We assemble as congregation of believers. Okay, yeah, but I don't call it a government. It's a relationship. Yeah, but it's a relationship with anything. Think about this. You have a relationship with anything. What do you have a relationship with? You can either have a relationship with a government or you can have a relationship with a religion. So it is about a relationship, but a relationship with God's what? God told us to seek his what and have a relationship with the, with that. So if he told us to seek his kingdom, we must have a relationship with his kingdom. If he told us to seek his government, which he said in Isaiah 9, 6, we must seek and have a relationship with that. We don't supposed to have a relationship with the religion. That's what the Pharisees did. That's they had a relationship instead of re, instead of them having a relationship with God's structure and his kingdom and his authority. They had a relationship with what they made, their religion, their Judaism. They had a relationship with that. And God said, nah, Jesus came and said, repent from that. For I came to bring a kingdom. So, yeah. But, yeah, it's about a relationship. But relationship with what? You know, and, and, and that's what Jesus came to reveal through the Holy Spirit. He said, I came to give you my government. Because, look. I never heard that before. I never heard anyone call it a government. Well, guess what, man? All glory to the king. That's why the Holy Spirit has put me, put put his children here so we can reveal things so the other children can get it. Then now they can reveal it. So, yeah, man, if you never heard it that way, guess what, man? You hearing it now in the scriptures. Jesus called us citizens. You only a citizen in a country. Guess why? Guess why you we have to be born again? In order to be a citizen of a country, you got to be born in it, right? 
but Jesus knew that we was all citizens of the kingdom of darkness. He knew that we wasn't born blood citizens of his king of God's kingdom. So he said, you know what? In order for you to be a citizen, I made a way. That's why born again is so important because you must be born again to enter into God's country. <laughs> to be a citizen of a country, you must be born, man. So, man, it's glory. It's, it's, it's a gloryful thing, bro. Well, thank you for teaching me. Man, all glory to the king, man. We all here to sharpen each other. We all here to sharpen each other. See, Kim, while there is a chance we are living in the times of Noah. Facts, man. So even though those important facts are, are important to know, because that's when we began to see who we are in the king, and that's how we began, began to understand the authority we have in the kingdom of God. But those are important facts. But in, in order to actually walk out these important facts, we must start to understand how do we transform on a daily basis. This knowledge of things can only take us so far, but we must start to really transform in our minds to become those authoritative, holy beings that Jesus called us to be. How do we walk out of depression? How do we walk out of anger? How do we walk out of foolish things? How do I deny my flesh? How do I say no to my temptations? These are the things that we have to learn so we can be the ambassadors that Jesus called us to be in his kingdom. We have to learn how to actually say no to our temptations. And the way we say no to our temptations is meditating on God's word day and night. He said, if you meditate day and night on my word, you will begin to obey it. And by obeying it, you will begin to be successful in all you do. But if I'm not obeying God's word, if I'm not meditating on God's word, me just saying I'm a believer in Christ is not, it's just me speaking it. That's why Jesus said, don't preach and, and don't worship me with just your lips. Worship me with your actions. But we can't worship God with our actions if we're not meditating on God's word. Because only by meditating, you able to obey it. So if you ain't reading your, your word, God's word daily, it's no way you abide, you obeying it daily. Because <laughs> he said the only way to obey it is by meditating day and night. You see the, you see the steps. God gave us structured steps on how to do his word and how to obey his word. And reading God's word once a week is not it. Because that means six days out the week, you're not obeying God's word. Six days out the week, you're able to fall in depression easily. Six days out the week, you're able to continue to get angry. Why? Because you're not feeding yourself with God's food. That's why it's important to meditate day and night. We live in a world that's full of sin, full of evilness, full of flesh. And we have just became born in God's country, living in this foolish world. We got to stay eat. We got to stay covered. We got to stay full of the armor of God full daily. <laughs> you, we can't afford. You can't afford to not be reading God's word. Let's be honest. You cannot afford to, to go your day a whole 24 hours without reading God's word. You can't afford it. Jesus Christ was sitting here on this earth, Yeshua the Christ, meditating on the Father's word every single day. How much more should you meditate? Yeshua the Christ, fasting. How much more should you fast? How much more should you start to elevate your spiritual life? That's how we overcome depression. That's how you overcome complaining. That's how you overcome that lust that you've been dealing with for the past six years. That's how you put down them cigarettes and them drinks that you've been trying to fight for the past 20 years. You've been trying to fight it on your own strength. But Jesus told you to put down everything else and meditate on my word day and night and watch how you transform. You've been trying to stop cussing. You know you should stop cussing, but you can't stop cussing. Why? Because you ain't eating God's word every single day. You haven't repented of the way you used to live. That is the most serious thing we're supposed to be doing. Reading God's word and praying to the Father consistently, daily. 
That's what gets you out of your turmoil. That's what make your relationship with your wife better. That's what make your relationship with your husband better. Because you're getting closer to the father. You want a better relationship with your children? Stop trying to get a better relationship with your children and get a be better relationship with the father in heaven. And that will automatically make your relationship better with the children. Seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all that other stuff will be added on. Stop seeking the other stuff and start seeking the government of God. Start seeking on how to live in his country, how I'm supposed to abide by his standards, how I'm supposed to love thy neighbor as I love myself, love my father with all my heart, mind, and soul. When you start to think on those things and live in his righteousness, all that other stuff will be added on. Your wife will be and your husband will be, y'all will start to connect more than ever. The enemy will start to be under your feet more than ever. You able to say no to your temptations when you were saying yes a minute ago. That fleshly desires that be trying to kick in because you've been walking with the spirit. He said you able to say you able not to fulfill the lust of your flesh no more. <laughs> because you decided to make a daily step, a daily mindset to say, you know what? I'm going to read God's word every day. You know what? I'm going to meditate on his word every day. You know what? I'm going to pray to the Father every single day. Every single day. I'm going to eat my spiritual food every single day and watch what happens. God said, I'm a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. Diligently means every day. Diligently doesn't mean every once every week. Diligently doesn't mean on Sundays. Diligently seek me means every day of your life, you are diligently seeking the kingdom of God. I am a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. <laughs> Dog, that is how we get out of this foolishness. Uh, eat my spiritual food. Facts. Facts. You want to stop fool? You want to stop falling to your foolishness? Don't you want to stop feeling depressed? You don't supposed to be in depression. You a citizen of the kingdom of God. Why do people make you feel like it's okay to be broken while you in Jesus Christ? You was broken before you got in Christ. But now that you in Christ, you're supposed to be made whole. Who told you you're supposed to still be broken? I didn't say that issues was going to come. Wasn't going to come. Trials and tribulations is always going to come. But we supposed to always overcome it. Why? Because I'm walking with the king. Who told you that it's okay to be depressed? Who, who told you it was okay to doubt God? Who told you it was okay that you don't need to read your word like that? Who told you that it was okay that you can still live your own fleshly life? Who told you that? The word didn't tell us that. That's why we continue to fall because we are destroyed because of what? A lack of knowledge. No, the Bible isn't a corrupt. Those who read the, the, the those who read the word and misuse it are corrupt. That's what's corrupt. I believe everything in there is true. I take I I I take my I go off on full faith that everything in that word is true. I choose to believe that. I'm going to believe that every word, because look, every word from Genesis to Revelation is God's testimony. If you read John, 1 John, the father said he got on, a, he got at the stand and he testified. He said, how much, you say you, you believe a, a mere man's testimony. He said, how much more should you believe the father's testimony from Genesis to Revelation was his testimony about his son, about his children, about his kingdom. I believe every word for me to, for me to not believe certain words is for me not to believe in Jesus wholeheartedly. Why? Because Jesus is the word. So I'm telling you that half of this is fake. That means I'm saying half of Jesus is fake. Oh, this part ain't real. That mean I'm saying this part of Jesus ain't real. Remember that. 
Jesus is the living word. So for me to be not believe in certain parts of the word is, is, is for me to say, I don't believe full heart, wholeheartedly in Jesus that way. And I, I refuse to feel that. I refuse to believe that. It's 500 years of spoken tradition before it was written down. King James said, King rewritten in the Bible. It is the living word. You can read it anywhere and touch it. Yep. But look, like I say, <laughs> everyone has a choice. Everyone. You have the choice to believe it's fake. You do. Our God is so good. Our King is so merciful that he gave each and every one of us the, the ability to deny him or to accept him. He gave each and every one of us the ability to believe his word is true. And he gave everyone the ability to believe his word ain't. You got the choice to believe it is or it's not. But by your choices, that's the that's the direction your life will your, your life will go towards. By believing in the word, the word is going to benefit for you. Because he said, if you are a double-minded man and doubting me, how dare you even, even believe in your mind that you're going to receive something from me? God said, if you even got the fact that you want to doubt me, how dare you even believe you will receive something from me? So if you already got doubts in the word of God, how, even, how do you even dare that the word is even going to benefit for you? Because it's not. It benefits for those because they choose to have wholeheartedly faith. In order to be saved, you must have faith. In order to even please the Father, you must first have faith. I have faith to believe that my God is so much powerful that he can still make a book that's been here for years and centuries still line up to what he, his will. That he can still make this book truth, regardless of how many men try to distort it. <laughs> because my God's that powerful. You telling me he ain't powerful enough to make a book and, and put a hedge of protection around it where it can be truth all this time? You saying he ain't that powerful? Nah, he that powerful. <laughs> He's that powerful. Now, let me read some of this. I believe in the word. Amen. Anna, what's good, sis? Hey, we out here this morning. It, 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 it's a rare situation. It's a rare, every blue moon situation. But um, all glory. Oh, I'm gonna drop my phone. All glory to the king because um, he needed me on here. He told me to get up on here, and somebody needed to hear something, and they did. Well, that's the very definition of catch on this call. Better of us. How are we supposed to have the mind change if we don't start from a position of doubt? You already started at a position of doubt. Your first thoughts, your first actions in life is doubt and, and wicked ways and, and living in that type of way. Jesus is the one that corrects that. You already been living in doubt. <laughs> you already been an enemy of God. You already hated him with your actions. You already distorted your, your whole being. But now that you have received Christ, if you claim to have received him, that doubt should die off. Gina, what's good, sis? That, die, that doubt should die off. Whenever you have received Christ, them living them old ways should have died off. That's what the Holy Spirit do to you, not by your own works. But when you receive Christ by your faith, he implants the Holy Spirit in you, the kingdom of God in you. Now you have that authority back. Now you got dominion back. That's why I be telling people, Jesus did not come to bring you a religion. He came to bring you back authority. We had authority in Genesis 126, but we lost that. But he came to bring you that back. Now you got authority over your life, authority over your, your flesh, authority over the principalities that's in this world. You got authority over the situations. You don't got to fall victim to sin anymore like we used to. You got authority back. Why? Because you were king. Because he's what? King of kings. Lord of lords. You now got dominion back and rulership. <laughs> we got to learn our authority. It's, it's legal terms. Man. 
It's called Thought Busters. Answer, stop critical thinking. That's what you're doing. You use them. Um, you're literally telling people to make believe irrelevant. It's all right, bro. Maybe you shouldn't be looking at things. See, that's why. See, that's why I say it's all up to you to believe or not. If you don't believe, I'm not here to make you believe it. I'm only here to tell you the word. The king says to deliver the kingdom of God and let them believe. And if they don't want to believe, then so be it. But the blood is off my hands. I'm not here to force you. I'm here to be a persistent ambassador for the kingdom of God. And if you choose not to believe, that's your choice. You are free to, you are free to choose. It's not real. You are free to choose it. <laughs> that my king said, look, you don't have to bend the knee to me right now. But guess what? At the end, everyone will bend. Everyone will bend that knee and say that he is king. I think you should just bend it now, though. But it's, it's, up, to, <laughs> it's up to you. Because guess what? If you get forced to bend the knee, it's going to be way more difficult and painful for you. But those who choose to bend the knee right now and serve the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Blessed is them, for they will reap the benefit of life. They will have the glorified bodies reigning with the king for an eternity. That's cool. But yeah, everyone will bend the knee. Everyone. Everyone. Everything that got a knee. If an insect got a knee, that insect is going to bend the knee. If a tree got a knee, the tree going to break down and, and fall on its knees and represent the king. Everything that got a knee in the earth, underneath the earth in the spiritual realm is going to say that you are king flat out. That's what a boss do. He a king, man. He ain't no little punk. He ain't no little weak, little religious being. He is straight up king. He a real king, a real boss. Only a boss can walk up and say that every knee is going to bend and say that I am Lord. <laughs> Only a boss can say, only, hey, and that's my king. That's who I look up to. That's who I try to resemble. That's who, that's the boldness I try to walk in every day. But only somebody with a boss move, with a boss heart can walk in and say, every knee is going to bend and bow and every tongue is going to confess that I am king. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the God I serve. That's the God I serve. And I love it. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. You feel me, Gina? I love it. I love it. So, yeah, those who are on here, let's learn to transform our minds. Let's learn to train train it's time for us to train to be the ambassadors that we are called to be it is excellent to learn knowledge it is excellent to learn learn the things about the kingdom of god but we must first master we must first truly inhabit what it is to love our father with all our heart mind and soul man ski what's good bro what's good man we must learn to love our father first, truly love our father with all our heart, mind and soul. And we must love one another as we love ourselves. How many of us actually love in each other? And not love the way the world tell you to love. I'm talking about love the way God tells you to love. With patience, kindness, forgiveness. Who holding grudges right now? Who claim to be of God, but you holding a grudge right now? How dare you claim to be a citizen of the kingdom of God, but you have an unforgiveness in your heart right now? Let's be real. We understand that we can, we got to fight these things and learn how to do these things. But who dare say that I'm a kingdom, a, a kingdom citizen living with the kingdom of God, but I'm willingly having unforgiveness in my heart right now. Those are the things we got to check. Those are the things that we got to realize that we don't have the option to hate in the kingdom of God. You must forgive, not the world. The world got the option. Satan allows the world to say yes and no. Satan allows the world to forgive and unforgive. Satan cool with that. He lets you compromise in his kingdom. 
If you want to be in the kingdom of darkness, hey, guess what? You can compromise. You can forgive them and you don't have to forgive them. You can be married and, and be straight or you can be married and be gay. You can have sex while you're married or you can have sex when you're not married. We could compromise here so you can, you know, you can tend to your flesh and your feelings. But in the kingdom of God is man and woman. In the kingdom of God is a man must have sex with his wife. In the kingdom of God is a man must not hold unforgiveness for in order for his sins to be forgiven, he must forgive those who, who wronged him. It ain't, no, it ain't no option in the kingdom. When did we start to think it was an option? When did we start to think that we had choices to choose bef between forgiveness and unforgiveness? Mercy and no mercy. Oh, I'm going to hold a grudge. I ain't going to hold it. When when do we have that? Where does What scripture says that? It's time for us to renew our mind. Renew our mind and realize that we are citizens of a kingdom. And the king of kings, when he declares and decrees something, it is so. It is so. So if he says, if a king on high says, love thy neighbor as you love yourself, that means you should live your life trying to love on others. Woo. Forgive others as I forgive you of your sins on high. That means you should live your life learning that, hey, even though you just hurt my feelings, I'm going to forgive you because it's nothing you did worse than what I did to my father. I was his enemy. I willingly sinned. I willingly disobeyed him. I willingly betrayed him multiple times. And if he had the nerve to forgive me, how much more should I forgive you? Real talk. Real talk. <laughs> you said read the New Testament first. Uh, I suggest that. Um, I suggest everybody need to read the whole word of God. Um, the Lord, my father had permitted me and, and charged me to read the whole word two years ago. And I did. I read New Testament all the way to Revelations and then I went from Genesis and started all the way over and finished it. And well, it's no finishing it because you got to consistently keep eating it. But I wanted to make, I said this to myself and I said this to the Holy Spirit. If I claim to say I love you and I claim to be in, in your kingdom as a new creation, I want to eat all of your word. I don't want to live in this world year after year after year, but I still never decided to read all of your word, but I do everything else. I accomplished that. I accomplished that. You can go to school at a college for eight years and accomplish that, but you can't read your word. You can go and be married and, and be married for years and, and you can take care of your children or you can go get a house or a mortgage, but you can't read your word. The most important thing in the world. No, I didn't want that. I wanted to read all of it and I read all of it and I will continue to do this year after year. That was the that was the 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 mindset the Holy Spirit gave me. <laughs> yes, the whole Bible is important. All of it. All of it. The Old Testament learned the Old Testament is what taught me how to have fear of the Lord. He, tro he, he truly showed me the fear of how I, the, the, the proper fear I should have. The New Testament molded it and taught me how to love and how to honor and respect and to and to 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 what's the word? Be so thankful of what my king did for me. Both testaments are needed. Remember, Old Testament testament is a wheel. So the Old Testament was a will that was left to us. You know, when someone dies, like someone left the will for you when they died, that was their will. The Old Testament was a will that was left to us. And the New Testament was a new will, a new covenant that was brought through Christ to give to us. How dare we not read the will that our father left? 
Man, it's deep, y'all. It's deep. Yes, but but for beginners. Yeah, beginners, absolutely. Everybody I say that's really new in Christ, I say start from Matthew and read a chapter a day from Matthew until the Holy Spirit teaches you to go further or, you know, teaches you how to just meditate on one verse. But I believe you should start from Matthew, read all the four gospels, read what the kingdom of God, read what Jesus came to bring us. Read who Jesus was. A lot of people believe, believe that Jesus came to bring a religion. A lot of people think Jesus only was supposed to die on the cross. Like that was his goal. A lot of people think that was his goal. That was the means to the goal. The goal was to bring back the kingdom of God and the Holy Spirit into his citizens, into his children. That was the goal. But he had to sacrifice himself. But he rose from that and he said, now it is done. I was able to get back the keys of the kingdom and he gave it back to the children. That was the goal. Now, our, now us as the children need to learn who we are in that kingdom. What authorities we now have. A lot of the children of God still believe that Satan can defeat us. When it says in Luke 10, 19, we got authority over all of the enemy. But how are we going to know that if we're not we reading our benefits? If we ain't reading our laws and our in our structures and what what authorities we now have, how are we going to know it if we ain't reading it? That's why he said we are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Man, man. Hey, nature. Um, nature's chosen one. Hey, look, we don't debate the word of God. If you've got your own mindset and you got your own thoughts, you 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 one hundred percent walking in your convictions, and so be it. I'm not. We don't we don't debate God's word. It's pointless. It's pointless for me or you to debate it, because God's word is so strong and so truth. Regardless if you believe it or not, it's still going to stand true. He said, "Look, if they don't believe the kingdom message, pick up your stuff, take your peace, dust, shake the dust off, and move on to the next." Move on to the, because guess what? While I'm trying to sit here and debate somebody who want to debate, it's somebody over there that needed to hear what I had to say and was waiting for that. But no, I'm wasting time debating. Now he said, man, pick, take your piece with you and get on. He said, shake the dust off you and get up I'm out of here and go to the next one. <laughs> I ain't about to debate. Look, he, look it, it's a difference if somebody just didn't understand and they wanted to know. That's a difference. Now it's time to go in. But if somebody got their wholeheartedly mind made up that, hey, whatever you saying ain't right in this and that, man. OK, all right. Go. You 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 know what you're doing. Go about your way then. <laughs> we all debated here, man. It's all glory to the king. It's all glory to the king. I just pray the Holy Spirit open your eyes the way he opened mine up. Then we would never understand. No, we get understand the truth. We said we're not going to debate. We ain't going to fight it. If you got your mind made up that this is what it is, why am I about to argue that with you? <clears throat> I, ain't about to I ain't about to go back and forth and say this and that. Nah, because guess what? Somebody new could walk in there and walk in this life. And they ain't going to know who to fool. They just going to see two people arguing and debating. They ain't going to know who right or who wrong. They just walked in and saw two people debating. Nah. Mm -mm. Nah. Like I said, it, it's not like a debate. It's not like we didn't. Really, it is, no debating. Facts. No debate needed. I agree. If, Like I said, if somebody have their mind set that Jesus is not the son of God. Say you have your mind set that he's not the son of God and he's just a prophet. But I believe that he is the son of God. <clears throat> Why would I keep going back and forth with you when you got your mind made up just as much as I got mine made up? I'm not going to change your mind. You're not going to change my mind. The only one who's going to change the mind here is the Holy Spirit. He's going to infiltrate your mind and he's the one that's going to change it. All I'm supposed to do is throw out the seeds. I threw out the seeds that the King of Kings is the Lord of Lords and that he's King of all. 
If you choose not to believe it, then I can't do nothing for it. Now, you can ask questions. Yeah, I get that. I'm just saying we ain't going to debate it. All right, there are things where when even believers have to go from milk to meat. Facts. Facts. Because this life is full of variables and a maturity level, we are still growing. Facts. We are still growing. Life is a live and learn. Amen. So look, y'all, this is what this is what Jesus wants. He wants us to continue to mature in him. He already called us perfect. So that's why a lot of a lot of time I talk to people, I say, stop saying that you're not perfect. I get where you're coming from. But we're trying to talk and speak what Jesus called us. Jesus said, you are holy. You are now righteous. You are now pure and you are now perfect in his sight. So in order to now walk out those steps that Jesus called us as, we must first believe it. For what he say, a man that first thinketh in his heart and believeth in his heart, so is he. So if you already believe and keep believing you're not perfect when you're living in perfection, which is Christ, then you're going to continue to walk in that path. Start believing what Jesus told you. So Jesus said, hey, you son, you are now perfect in me, regardless of your mistakes. Cool. Thank you, dad. I'm, 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 I'm perfect. Now I'm going to believe that wholeheartedly. And now I'm going to walk in that. So now that you believe in the things that Jesus called you to be, you're starting to mature now. Will you make mistakes? Facts. You will. Because we living in a, we living in a new life in this sinful world. So you're going to make your little, that's why you say a righteous man may fall seven times. He didn't say a wicked man will fall. A righteous man may fall seven times. So that means he know we may make mistakes. But the, the goal is to continue to mature. That them mistakes you was making last year, you ain't really making that no more. But you have learned to see new, new foes you must conquer now. But now you matured and now those mistakes you was making that year, you ain't making no more. That's the goal, man. And let me turn this air on. Your boy getting hot. We fall short, but the key is it's not becoming prideful like Satan. Facts. Facts. And the way it's not becoming prideful is knowing that we can't do this without Christ. The Holy Spirit is our is our strength. You ain't you ain't evolving at all if you don't have the Holy Spirit. You ain't changing a bit if you ain't seeking the kingdom of God. The only reason I have boldness in my heart is because the Holy Spirit is in me. The only reason I'm knowing certain things is because the one who knows it all is in me. So as I tell many people, you are trash without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you are trash without the Holy Spirit. If you don't got the Holy Spirit in you, you are trash human being. Because why? We live in our sinful nature. Our hearts are wicked. All we do is think about of our lust and our foolishness. But when, when you got Christ in you, man, that changes. That changes, man. I tell people this. It is impossible not to change if you got the Holy Spirit in you. But it's impossible to change if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. You ain't changing. You, you know them people that you say one day they'll change? If they're not seeking the Father, they're not changing. They're going to continue to lean on to their flesh. That's what happens when you're not leaning on to the Holy Spirit. It's, it's, that's why Jesus say, I didn't come to condemn you because you was already condemned. He didn't come and condemn us. He didn't come to condemn us. Why? Because you was already condemned. He came to save us. That he said, look, you already trash. You already messed up. I'm telling you to come upon me so now you can have life. And if we don't climb on to Christ, you ain't changing. You ain't going to elevate. You're going to continue to be, we all was going to continue to be in our lusts. Man. That's why Jesus is important. That's why the Holy Spirit is a must. That's why meditating on his word daily is crucial. Because look, even though you are saved, say you saved. Excellent. Now your, your motive should have changed now. You are no longer focused on receiving salvation. You got that. Your job now is being a representation of the kingdom of God now. 
It's not about salvation no more for you, but it's about representation now. Now you're supposed to live and learn how to live as a citizen of the kingdom of God. You're supposed to now learn how to be ambassadors of Christ. All of us are supposed to be out here representing the kingdom of God in our actions, in our everyday life. And how I respond to things, how I look at things, how I act with things, how I treat my wife and my children, how I don't do foolish things when I'm by myself. My wife ain't with me right now. So that means, oh, I'm going to do some foolishness. No, I am supposed to still uphold a standard right here, even when no one's looking at me. Why? Because my king is with me. So the standard applies wherever I go. That's why I say church ain't a building. Church is everywhere. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. That means we're supposed to receive and act as if we're in the presence, which we are, in the presence of the Father at all times. Will you make mistakes? Yes. I see it. That's the facts. But that's the point of us getting closer to the King. The more you mature, the less mistakes you make. The more you mature, the more you start to have that standard, even when you're by yourself. <laughs> it's enough of us being lukewarmish, y'all. That's enough of that. Your body ain't yours no more. Remember that. Your body ain't yours no more. You don't got the opportunity to scream, my body, my choice, especially you women of Christ. You who are daughters of the king. You don't got the option to say my body, my choice. Don't you dare say that because you you going against the scripture then for your body is no longer yours for your body now belongs to the king of kings. We don't got the choice. To, we don't got the option to scream the way the world scream. I can't moan and complain like the world. I can't. We supposed to stand out. Remember, we set apart. Remember. We in the world, but not of it, remember? I'm not looking to see which president going to save me. Uh-uh, I got my king. Biden can't save, Trump couldn't save, Republican can't, Democrat can't save me. The kingdom, the government of God saves me. Remember, I'm not of the world no more. So the world's governments is not of me anymore. I don't rely on your structures. I rely on the king of kings structure. So whoever's in office, I'm fine. Remember when the children of Israel wanted a king like the other nations and Jesus and the father said, hey, I'm your king. No, we want a king like the other nations. And ever since then, we've been messed up. <laughs> Stop relying like the world rely on things. Remember, you don't have to worry no more, regardless of inflations of certain situations and, and heartache and pandemics and, and death and all these things. Because remember, we're guarded by the kingdom of God. We got angels surrounded all around us. The government is near us. The government is in us. Remember, we are children of the most high. So why are why am I afraid like someone who's an enemy of the most high? When when the when the angel came in Egypt, the children of the, the children of Israel was in the house with the blood covered under them. They wasn't worried about that. The angel wasn't touching them, but he touched those who wasn't in the kingdom of God. We're covered by a deeper blood now. <laughs> now not saying that persecution. Not saying trials and tribulations going to come our way, but I'm saying take it as joy for this is an opportunity for you to build your, your, your faith. This is an opportunity to build your endurance when you experience trials and tribulations, as it says in James 1. So when you who are a citizen of the kingdom of God, you don't act out when stuff don't go your way. You who is a child of God, when stuff don't go your way, you supposed to remember what the scriptures say. Oh, this is an opportunity for me to build my faith. My father allowed this trial and tribulation to occur because he wanted me to get strengthened in a certain area. He gave us the cheat sheet. He gave us the, he gave us the clues. 
How many, how many of us still saying that we're going to be caught off guard like a thief in the night? How many, how many who are believers in God still believe that you're going to be caught off guard like a thief in the night? When he told you that that applies to those who are not in the, who not walking in light. For he said, but you are the children of light and you will not be caught off guard like a thief in the night. Why we didn't know that? Why? Because we wasn't reading our word. We wasn't reading the word for ourselves. Where it says that you will be caught off guard like a thief in the night. If you read a little further down, he said, but you who are children of the light. You should know that signs. <laughs> you should not be caught off guard. You should not fall victim to like the children of the world. Noah wasn't caught off guard. But those who was in the world was caught off guard when that wave came and blew them houses down. Lot wasn't caught off guard. Why? Because they, the angels came and got Lot. But everybody who was in Sodom and Gomorrah who didn't get brought out by them angels, they was caught off guard. So why are we fearing? Why are we nervous? Why are we scared? He said, fear the one that destroys body and soul. Don't fear the one who can just take your body out because after that, they can't do nothing else. Man. You know, when people say, I don't know who this for, but this is for someone. I know who this is for. This is for everyone who is a child of God. Depression is not of you. This, this is for everyone who are a children of the most high. Depression is not of you. You don't have to, you don't supposed to be in depression. You don't supposed to fall victim to anxiety and to anger. No, you don't. Stop letting people lie to you. You have a spirit of a powerful, sound, loving mind. That's what the spirit gave you. He did not give you a spirit of fear. He did not give you a spirit of depression. That is the spirit of the world. The reason why you continue to fall in depression, let's be honest. The reason why you still in depression is because you're not meditating on your word day and night like Joshua 1a said. Because you're not meditating day and night, that's causing you not to obey, which causes you not to have on the whole armor of God, which causes those arrows that the enemy is, is, is launching at you to hit. So them arrows that's... that's, that's they're prospering and hitting you, causing you to fall into them foolishness because you don't have the whole armor of God on. And how do I get the whole armor of God on? Meditating day and night on God's word, as it said. By walking in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. These are the things that's going to keep us to live our everyday lives as citizens of the kingdom of God. These are the things that's going to make us show the example of this is what God looks like. So now when your, your, your co-workers see you, they like, hold on, you claiming you love God, but you different because a lot of people who claim to love God still look like us, sound like us, act like us, but you really standing out. You really not cussing people out. You really is positive. You really don't backbite. You really not gossiping. Everybody just got they shit, they church, they check shorted. Everybody check was short this month. Why are you the only one that's not tripping? Because you're the only one that know that your source ain't this job. Your source is the father in heaven. That's what father mean, source. So because your source is God, this don't manipulate you. Lily, what's good, sis? But we can't make those impressions to the dark people. We cannot make those impressions to people who's living in the dark because we're not meditating on our word day and night. You are supposed to be an example of what the kingdom of God looks like because God is trying to use each and every one of us who claim to be his children to be a light to those who are still walking in the dark. You're supposed to be living your life trying to figure out how can I expand God's kingdom? Not 
what job I'm going to get so I can get more money, so I can get a better car and stun on people, so I can get a lovely wife and be pre have a pretty wife and pretty kids and, and go on trips. and That ain't our life. Our life is to represent the kingdom of God and all that will be added on. We seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and that stuff is added on. The world seeks to add it on. The world seeks the money and the and the and the the fame and the what this is and what my plans are and what my goals are and what I want to do. But those who are children seek what the father's will is. Look in the scriptures when he said when he came to judge the man that he gave talents to. He gave them talents and said, what did you do with the things I gave you? How did you bring it back? Did you multiply it? I gave you three. Did you bring back five? And one, he gave this one, just one. And he did nothing with it. He gave you salvation. You did nothing with it. He gave you the ability to sing. You did nothing with it. You did not advance the kingdom of God with your singing. He gave you the ability to learn how to just to be a giving person. But you gave to no one. Why not? You were supposed to use that talent or that ability you have to advance the kingdom of God here on earth. We all got platforms right now. Every one of us got either 500 people or either five people. But each and every one of us got a platform. Each and every one of us got Facebook. What is you doing with it? Are you advancing the kingdom of God with it? Or does it look like the world when somebody come on your page? You got an opportunity to advance God's kingdom in your page, in your sphere of influence. In your circle of influence, are you trying to advance God's kingdom or are you steady promoting the world? When someone who is lost come to your page, are they going to get closer to God or are they going to get closer to, to the world by looking at what you post? Hey, we love you, Barry. One day you will see my king and I pray that you have found them already in your heart before you see him physically. But we love you, bro. I'm praying for you, man. I pray that you see him now. See him now. Because time is near, bro. It ain't, you ain't got to, who said you got tomorrow? It's a possibility that you can die in your sins tonight. Who told you you got tomorrow? Everybody, it's, it's somebody just died right now. Somebody just died right now. Somebody is dying consistently every day. Who to say that you're going to live another day? It's a strong possibility that you can die tonight in your sins. Are you willing to give up your eternity? <laughs> Accept Christ now. Accept him now. Accept my king now. Woo. Accept him now. Today is a gift. Facts. Today is a gift. Tomorrow is not promised. I'm learning that more and more. Tomorrow is not promised. My next five minutes is not promised. Let's be honest. We are not promised the next five minutes. <laughs> Did you do anything today? Did you do anything today? to get God's word out? Did you share somebody's stuff that's that's speaking about God's word so you have done your part in the kingdom to advance his kingdom? What Did you do anything yet today to say, how can I do anything to advance his kingdom? Did I send somebody a scripture? Did I, did, I, did, I, did I be positive to someone? Did I tell someone they're beautiful today to show them the kindness of my... Did I represent the kingdom of God in any type of way today? That is the way we're supposed to live. And in doing that, that joy that Jesus talks about is there. Why? Because you're no longer trying to keep up with the Joneses. You're no longer focused on the world's things and the world's problems. You're no longer trying to do the things of the world and get high and drunk like the world and, and talk like the world because that's a heavy burden. Trying to keep up with the world is a heavy burdening yoke. But when you take upon God's yoke and his burden, 
Yeah, that's a difference. Did I pray with someone? If you did, that's what's up, bro. You got you got to always show the light in the darkness. Our light cannot facts. Amen. Amen. The Father just want us to have that mindset, y'all. That every day you wake up, it's an opportunity for you to resemble the kingdom of God and not to just resemble it, but to spread it with your actions. We supposed to be preaching God's kingdom with our actions, how I love on others, how I forgive others, how I'm patient with others, how I'm kind with others, how I, I talk with gentleness with others, how I'm bonus with Christ with others. How I, that's how you represent Jesus in your everyday life. How what decisions you made when somebody cut you off in traffic. Did you put the middle finger up at him or did you just take a deep breath and say, it's okay. The Lord got this. That was your opportunity to choose the world or choose God. When you know, when you say I put God first, putting God first is an action. So when you do get cut, cut off in your traffic while you driving and then you decide not to cuss them out or zoom up and look at them and put the middle finger up. It's because you chose God first. But if you decided to zoom up and put the middle finger up, it's because you chose the world first. Choosing God first is an action. <laughs> and that's how we live. That's how we resemble that we are citizens of God's kingdom. Are you citizens of Satan's kingdom? By the way you act. He said you should know a tree by its fruit. Everyone can claim they believe in Jesus Christ. Even the demons believe that Jesus is Jesus Christ. So that don't mean nothing. Honestly, it's by your actions that prove that what your mouth said was real. Do you believe in Jesus Christ wholeheartedly that you have now repented from your wicked old life? That you now want to live a new life according to the word of God? That's when you are saved. Not just the knowledge of knowing that Jesus was here. Satan has the knowledge that Jesus is here, but our knowledge in him is supposed to transform us into repentance. Repentance means to change our mind. You just changed your views on how you should live life now. Then your sins are forgiven in heaven. Repent doesn't mean asking for forgiveness. Repent means I changed my mind, Father. I don't want to live like this no more. This filthy way of living is destruction. And I cannot live eternity with you living like this. Help me to get out of this. So the Father said, now that I saw that you truly want change, now that I've seen that you know that you was living evil, I will give you the answer to how you can now change the Holy Spirit. Now with the Holy Spirit, you were able to work out what you was believing now. Let's get it, y'all. Let's get it. Let's get it. So, yeah. My whole the whole message today uh, was to push the fact that let's learn how to train to be ambassadors of Christ. Let's seek God's kingdom daily. How do I do that, bro? Pick up God's word today. Start reading today. How do I meditate? Let's learn how to meditate. Excuse me. Meditation is something you always do. This ain't something new. You meditate on something every single day. You can meditate on your bills. Or you, you can wake up starting to meditate what you got to pay for, what you ain't got, how, what you probably ain't going to be able to pay today. You meditating on that. And by that meditation is giving you the feelings, the understandings and which way you should go, which way you should operate. If you're going to feel depressed or not, because you're sitting there meditating on your bills, you're meditating on your spouse right now, you're meditating on where you're going to go, you're meditating on your job, probably going to tick you off this morning. You know how to meditate. 
God said meditate on my word though. So now I need to realize in Luke 10, 19, it says we have authority over all of the power of the enemy. Let me meditate on that. You telling me, first off, I got authority now. So that means Jesus came to bring me authority, right? So I got authority. I have authority over all of the power of the enemy. So that means that all that power that the enemy had on me before making me fall into sin and doing things that I didn't want to do that I knew I shouldn't do, but I didn't know how to get out of it. I got authority over that now. How do I, how do I work that? That is meditating on God's word. So now that you're meditating on it, he said you will begin to obey it now. Hey, Nathan, <laughs> you want to do it more? <laughs> hey, Nate, what's good, bro? Hey, man, this is a, like I told Gina and, and Lily, this is a, a, a blue moon situation. Once in a blue moon, bro, I was like, hey, I've been off for a couple of days. I enjoyed my anniversary for these last few days. And um, I had to get up because I needed to get my car fixed for something. I said, man, let's put that work in, Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, I decided to get on a little earlier today thank y'all man yeah we had our 17 years of, of marriage me and my wife 17 years all glory to the most high all glory to the king man that he allowed us to continue to be married he allowed us to see 17 years and, he, and I pray that he allowed us to see more but yeah um but even in that, like I was telling y'all earlier, things began to change with me and my wife because we began to not focus on each other and we began, we began to focus on the kingdom of God. When I started to make Jesus my standard, she started to make Jesus her standard. When we started to seek the kingdom of God, that's when our relationship got better. Why? Because we started to realize our marriage is not for us. My marriage is not just to say I'm married to go get a nice house and say I got a pretty wife and someone I can make kids with and, and this. No, my marriage is to resemble the marriage between Christ and the church. My marriage is literally to show that this is what the kingdom of God looks like in the home. That is why we are married. When we got the mindset of that is why we are married, it's raps. It, we, we, it's raps. Satan has lost now because we have now re realized what is the source of our marriage. It's to resemble the king. When I realized why I'm a father now, that's when things got better with me and my children. I ain't a father just because I got kids and I got kids because that ain't the reason. My father allowed me to be a father because he wanted me to represent what it is to be a citizen of the kingdom of God as a father. He wanted to resemble of what he was to his children. That's why I'm supposed to react and teach and, and train my kids the way he trains and act with me. I'm supposed to love and forgive them the way he loved and forgive me. So I am a father just to represent the real father. That is why I'm a parent. Father, our, our father allows things to represent what he's doing. Do y'all notice that? He, he put this over here so it can resemble what's happening in the spiritual realm. You are a father so you can resemble and, 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 and show what it is how I was a father. You are being married so you can show what it is when Christ marries the church. You are in that situation so you can show how Christ overcame that situation with the power of love. You are in that situation so you can understand why Christ was in the wilderness praying to the father so you can now be in the wilderness and pray to the father. <laughs> Everything points to the Father. All your trials and tribulations is to point you back to the Father instead of pointing you to the world. Man. We will be celebrating 15 years together, eight years married. Amen, sis. All glory to the King. Cinnamon Spice. That's what's up. 
Amen. Congratulations on 17 blessings. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. That's good stuff. Thank you, man. All glory to the king. All glory to the most high. And um, even that, even that, like I said, we all we all here to teach each other and, and sharpen each other. Um, anytime y'all hear me, I will always say all glory to the king because I want to always point back and redirect y'all praises back to the king. Um, I got this from King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, I've learned from his mistakes that Jesus, that the father wanted King Nebuchadnezzar to rule and reign like the father in heaven. The father wanted King Nebuchadnezzar to have kingdoms and be the king. He wanted King Nebuchadnezzar to govern the people. He was cool with that. God wants his children to look like him. That's why he made us in his image and his likeness to reign like he reigns. The issue was King Nebuchadnezzar took it to his head and realized and never gave the credit back to God. King Nebuchadnezzar said, look what I created. Look what I done. And God warned him. And he and when he warned him, King Nebuchadnezzar did right for a year. <laughs> he did right for a good year. But after that year, King Nebuchadnezzar went right back to his old ways because he truly didn't repent. And then he gave and then God came down and gave him a heart of an animal because King Nebuchadnezzar didn't give praise and glory to the most high. King Nebuchadnezzar said that I built these kingdoms. There's no kingdom greater than mine when the father in heaven like, oh, is that so? So whenever somebody give any kind of praise to me, thank you, but all glory to the king in heaven. Hey, man, you cooked a good dinner today, man. Thank you. But all glory to the king because he gave me the ability to do so. Hey man, you 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 made a sweet video. Oh man, thank you though. But uh, ha, all glory to the king, because without him, I'm trash. So I pray that y'all learn to do that as well. And anything somebody prays y'all with, they said you, you say you know how to do hair. Oh, you did a good job on doing that hair. Thank you. But all glory to my king. The Holy Spirit is the one who gave me the ability to use my hands this way. <laughs> so yeah, that's one of the tips and tricks of living in the kingdom of God. <laughs> One of the little things I've been learning. Another thing I've learned where we don't supposed to boast on being here tomorrow. When somebody asks you, can you come over to my house in five days? You can say yes, Lord willing. He say, how dare you say you're going to be there in another week? Who to say that you're going to be here in another five minutes? He said, that's sinful. He says, it's best for you to say, Lord willing, I'll be there. So when people ask me, can you come do this at my crib? Yeah, I'd be there, Lord willing, if the Lord allows me to still be here. <laughs> if he gives me the ability to come over there, I will. So yeah, that's another tip that I have learned in the kingdom of God. While I didn't know that. All glory to the king. Knowledge is powerful. Now we sharpening each other. Now, sis, you can use that and go sharpen somebody that's in your circle of atmosphere, in your circle of influence. You're supposed to use that. I forgot what scripture that's in. I believe that's in James. Ah, I believe that's in James. But if I forgot the scripture, but look in Google. Um, um, you should say, Lord willing. Look at the scripture, read it, start to apply it, then teach it to people that you know. And now they will learn something new. That is what we're supposed to be doing, sharpening each other. Mama used to say, if the Lord allows. There you go. Same thing right there. Hey, Nate, I love you too, bro. Putting that work in, man, in the early morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me read some of this, and we probably about to pray out. I ain't going to be on here too long. Facts. All right, yeah. So, yeah, before we, before we get off, um, let's just get the understanding that I promise y'all and I can only promise you this because this is what the word says. The more you seek God, I promise you this, please. The, the 36 that's on here, all of us are going through trials and tribulations, especially, look, regardless if you are a child of God or not, 
you're going to go through trials and tribulations. It's best you just be a child of God so that when you go through these trials and tribulations, you're able to stand on a firm foundation and not be destroyed by the winds and the rains and the seas that's going to blow against your house. He said it's going to be stuff that's going to hit on both houses. The difference is the one who's building on sand is going to fall. Facts. But the ones who's building on the kingdom of God, you will stand firm. So I'm telling you this, you're going to go through something either today, tomorrow, Lord willing, you're still here. You're going to always have trials and tribulations. But guess what? We are able to overcome it. And he said that in your trials and tribulations, take it as joy. Read um, James 1, y'all. James 1. Thank you. You right there. James 4. Is that James 4.15? Lord willing. Thank you, sis. That's what um where I said start saying Lord willing. That's James 4.15. Good job, sis. Now on James chapter 1, verse 2. This is telling us about our trials and tribulations. So when you go through stupid stuff that's happening, he said, Don't be upset. Don't start complaining. Take this as an opportunity to say, man, the father is allowing me to grow my faith right now. Man, the father, the father just allowed me to grow my strength in this area right now. He said, take it as joy. So when somebody cuts you out, don't be looking like, why is y'all acting stupid? No, realize, wait, this is an opportunity for me to grow my patience right now and to grow my forgiving. You know, my, my heart of forgiving, this is an opportunity for me to grow it. That is how we defeat this world, y'all. Knowing that our trials and tribulations are only here to strengthen us, not to break us, not to kill us, not to take us out, but to strengthen us. And the only way we are going to do this is if you're reading God's word every day. If you're meditating on his word every day day. He said, only then will you succeed in Joshua 1, 8. Only then will your full armor of God will be on. So when you say no weapon formed against me should prosper, it's going to not prosper. Why? Because you have put on the whole armor of God. But if you're not putting on your whole armor of God every day, you're going to fall to depression. You're going to fall to anxiety. You're going to fall to anger that one day, that, that Wednesday, that Thursday, that Friday. Why? Because you're not picking up God's word. You ain't meditating on advancing the kingdom of God. You don't have to fall to depression ever again. That is your medicine, Jesus' word. You have to take it daily, though. <laughs> this medicine you must take daily in order to combat the foolishness of this world. But if you don't take it daily, you are liable to revert back to your old fleshly ways. I'm being 100% honest with you. And I think y'all already know that. I think y'all know that you can, you can recount and think back that when you wasn't reading God's word for that week or two, how foolish you was wind up acting how you allow thoughts to creep in and you allow it to take over instead of casting it down. The word of God gives you the strength to say no to your thoughts. The word of God gives you the strength to say no to when depression try to hit you. I didn't say depression wasn't going to try to form a weapon. But now that that depression formed a weapon and it shoots, you were able to block it with the shield of faith now. Whew. When anger come, you know that feeling you get when somebody say something dumb to you? You're going to feel it. I ain't say you ain't going to feel it, but you don't got to fall to it now. So when you feel it, uh, you remember that you've been focusing on the word of God. Oh, this is an opportunity for me to cast this foolishness down. It's making me upset, Father, but I know what it is. It's the enemy. I cast it down right now. Now you just defeated that anger when a week ago you would have let that anger defeat you and you would have cussed them out. And now you would have been a representation of the kingdom of darkness instead of the representation of kingdom of God. Why? Because you've been meditating on God's word. So, yeah, y'all, let's put that in our minds and our hearts 
and let's repent from not reading God's word daily and meditating daily. And let's renew our minds to saying we're going to make an we're going to make this an opportunity to read God's word daily. And last thing before I go, whose parents on here? Who are, who a parent to younger children that's still in the house? Raise your hand or say me or whatever. Anybody that's parents on here. If y'all got younger children, okay, cool. You, eat, grands, that's two. You get, if it's grands as well, I'm not here to. I'm not here to tell you how to raise your children, but we are all children of God, and we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, and we all supposed to know that we supposed to train our children up in the way of our King. We live in an age where influences of Satan is at an all time higher than it ever was in our time as being a kid. I only saw the 30 people around my neighborhood and my family that I can be influenced from. Our children can be influenced by millions of people now by a click of a button. So that means it is so much more easy to be influenced by the kingdom of darkness than it ever been. How much more should we be focusing and meditating and reading God's word with our children daily? Me and my wife have now been daily. I mean, we was doing it consistently, but we are daily making sure we are reading the word of God with them so they can be strengthened so they can understand what it is so they can be trained because Satan is daily pushing his message we must daily push the message of the kingdom of God in your children's face. Please make that an effort. Make that an effort to figure out something. We bought a devotional book, a book where we can, it, it reads devotions every day. And every day, me and my wife and my son and my daughter, we get together and we read the devotions. Everybody do their own stuff every day. So I make sure they read their word on their own times and we read ours. But we come together at some point of the day and we eat our spiritual food. And then after we get done reading it, we explain it to the kids and have them explain what they think. But we're doing this consistently. Consistency is what's key. And now they're building their spiritual man. They're, they're building more capacity in their spirit to know how to defeat this world. So I pray that y'all do the same thing with y'all children because that's who the enemy is truly attacking right now. They're trying to attack the youth because they are the future. And if I can get you to, to compromise now, how much more easy is it going to be for you to be influenced for the kingdom of God, darkness when you get older? So, yeah, they are less attack because the enemy is attacking. So I just want to put that on there on y'all and see, you know, throw some 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 bombs out there and we can do this together as children of God and we can train our children up in the way that the kings say so we can have true kingdom children coming up. Because imagine, look, I want my son to be where I'm at in, my, in his 20s. I want him to surpass. That is the best inheritance you can leave your child. The inheritance of the kingdom of God. But we can't do that if we're not applying that for ourselves, because guess what? Your children ain't going to hear a word you're saying that they ain't seeing you doing it. If you, they don't see you do it, if they ain't seeing you live it, if they ain't seeing you being patient and kind and forgiving and merciful to them, but you're trying to teach them what God tell you should do, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. So you must be applying this yourself. You must be showing this in yourself. Your children and your spouse must see you and be like, okay, I can hear you. Now I can hear you. And that's how we put that work in, in our everyday life. That's why people in who you don't even know should be able to see the light of Christ in you without you saying a word. Why? Because you actually put that work in. You actually meditate on God's word day and night. We have to be their examples. Amen. All right, y'all, let's pray out. I appreciate y'all coming on and kicking it with your boy, talking about God's government and advancing God's kingdom a second at a time. Let's get that. 
Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Father. I know you always said you gave us the ability to come to your courts, but you told us and asked us to come with thanksgiving before we even make our request. So, Father, we thank you for your mercy and your kindness and your love. We thank you for your preparations. We thank you for you pursuing us. We thank you for acknowledging us because you first loved us. We couldn't seek you first. You first sought us. You first forgave us. You first honored us, respected us as if we deserved it. You gave it to it first and we didn't even deserve it. So, Father, we thank you for showing us examples of how we should be. So, Father, I ask that you let us be the example to our children, example to those who are living in the dark, example to those who are at our jobs, example to those who are driving beside us and next to us in another car, example to those in the grocery store, example to those wherever we go, we are the church. Wherever we go, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Wherever we go, those who are the children of God are surrounded by the government of God. Angels are around us. The Holy Spirit is in us. So let us show your examples, Father. Let us be that light and that salt that you called us to be. Let us be ambassadors of your kingdom. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We ask that you give us a heart of forgiveness and a heart of mercy and a heart of repentance. We love you in the name of Jesus. All glory to the King. Amen. All right, y'all. As I always say before I get off my lives, every time your truest relationship with the Father, it is shown when nobody else is watching you. Your truest relationship with God, it is shown when you are by yourself. I can act like I love Jesus on here. I can speak it with my lips and praise him with my lips. But when I get off this live, am I still going to represent the kingdom of God by myself? Or I'm going to go back to my old filthy ways and my, my sinful ways because y'all not watching me. That's why I say your truest relationship with God, it is shown when nobody else is around because the true eyes are watching you. And that is the Holy Spirit. And that's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So let's represent the kingdom of God even when in our alone times, y'all. That's when the power come. And that's when we're able to display that power in the public because we do it in the dark time when nobody else is watching us. I love y'all and Lord willing, I'll see y'all next time. And as always, let's get it.